everyone welcome back to my channel for today's video we have my will i buy it this is where i'll be going over the releases from the past month and give you my thoughts and opinions on them and letting you know whether i want to pick them up or not this video is inspired by samantha march who did create the will i buy it series over on her channel and she posts her will i buy it every single wednesday i will have samantha's channel linked in the description box below Samantha did also kindly create the community Will I Buy It playlist for people to put their videos like this in and again I'll have that linked in the description box below. And finally I take my information from the Trend Mood 1 Instagram feed which will again be in the description box. Just to address the possible elephants in the room I have changed up my background. I did have my desk against a plain wall but I've now turned it around so that you can see the shelving behind me. Not too sure how I feel about it just yet, but I'm going to do it for a week's worth of videos and see how I feel about it. If not, I will just turn back around. But other than that, we best get started going over the makeup releases because I do have a lot of tabs open in my browser. So this is probably going to be quite a long video. So going back a few weeks to a post about the latest mascara release from Benefit. This is the Their Real Magnet Extreme Lengthening Mascara. So this one claims to have 36 hour wear, 40% longer lashes, lightweight buildable formula, won't smudge or flake and is $27 for the full size or $15 for the mini. And this product has been available now for a few weeks. This is a mascara that doesn't really appeal to me at all. I have tried the original Their Real Mascara and I wasn't a massive fan of it. So I don't know if I would like this one. I am intrigued by it because it does say that it has a magnetically charged core and I don't quite get how that works. I've not really watched any reviews or anything on it yet because I say it doesn't appeal to me so I don't feel the need to look into it any further. But no doubt people that I generally follow on YouTube will probably mention it in upcoming videos so I'll keep an eye out for the reviews but yeah this isn't one that appeals to me. Then we have a new eyebrow product from Huda Beauty. This is the Bomb Brows Micro Shade Brow Pencil. And this one comes with a 0.9 millimeter pencil. This product is $17 and is also available now. I think this is on UK sites for around about £15. And I was expecting it when I first seen it released to be of a higher price. I did think based on the price of Huda's other products that it would be around the same price as the kind of benefit products, which are between £20 and £25. So I was pretty impressed by its affordability. I am quite tempted by this one because I don't mind a fine brow pencil. I do have the precise in my brow, which I do quite enjoy. My preference when it comes to speed of doing my brows is the Benefit Goof Proof, which is a slightly bigger, almost teardrop shape. But every so often I do quite like reaching in for a fine tips one. So I am quite tempted to give this one a go, I say, especially with it only being £15, it's not too expensive. So this is a product that I might add to a basket if I'm making an order for something else. I don't think it's one I would specifically go out of my way to purchase, but it is one that I would quite like to try. Then we have a product that says it is new and back in stock. So I don't think this is the latest release. I think it is just possibly a restock. And this is from the brand M Cosmetics and is one of their Glow Radiant Veil Blushes in Venetian Rose, which is a vintage rose shade. This is a really pretty blush. When I first seen this picture, I didn't actually know what the brand was, but I was drawn in because it is really pretty. I don't believe I can get M Cosmetics anywhere here in the UK. I don't think I can even get it from them directly because I don't believe they ship here to the UK. I don't actually even know if they're in Sephora or Ulta or anything like that, but it is a brand that they have quite a few products of that I would like to try, and this blush is kind of one of them. Even though it is a glowy blush, which isn't my personal preference, it looks like such a pretty shade that I think it would be really nice, especially in the kind of summer months. It is $34, which is more than I like to spend on an individual blush, but this one did definitely catch my eye. The next thing to mention isn't actually a product, but it is an announcement, and that is that Becca Cosmetics is closing as at September 2021. I'm not surprised that we are going to start seeing the closure of some makeup brands giving the past year. I was quite surprised that it was Becca that was the first casualty, because as far as I'm aware, they do have a lot of stable products that people do love and are part of their holy grails in their collection so I was quite surprised that it was Becca. To be honest if you would have asked me what I thought the first makeup brand to go under I probably would have said Lorac Cosmetics because 
you don't seem to hear much about them and even possibly the balm to be honest because other than the bronzer that they released i don't think any of their latest releases have been hits as it were so i was quite surprised it was becca i haven't tried an awful lot from becca to be honest i do have a primer from them and then i not long ago purchased one of their highlighters but I haven't yet tried it. So obviously it's typical just as I'm getting into the brand they are going under. So in a way I'm kind of hoping that I don't love the highlighter. I have just placed an order for their under eye corrector because I have heard amazing things and it is a product that I have gone to purchase a few times but never bit the bullet. But I thought I'm best trying it while I can still get hold of it and I think that was one of their products that was the first to sell out on a lot of websites. So I am glad I've picked that one up so I can give it a try. But again, annoyingly, if I do fall in love with it, I won't be able to repurchase it. But it is really sad to see any makeup brands go. Then we have a first of a couple of releases from Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics. This is the collection of face powders. This includes seven baked blush and bronze duos. The highlighters are back in singles with a few favourite shades and two new shades. And then there is a new shade of a loose beaming light. These were available as at March 2nd. These products, from what I've seen of pictures online, didn't really appeal to me anyway. There isn't any prices on the post that I'm looking at because I think this was the first revealed post but there's nothing from this collection that does draw me in and I think they were of a slightly higher price point so these are a pass for me. Then we have some cute little eyeshadow palettes that caught my eye from the crayon case. These are the travelling mini notepads and come in eight different shades. They are black, blue, green, orange, purple, pink, yellow and red and these are only $12 each. These have really cute little packaging. They are all kind of monochromatic palettes and they are really pretty and $12 is a really good price. I've not heard too much about this brand so I don't know as to their quality or anything but I do like the idea of these and say I think they are really cute and if there is a colour story that does catch your eye for $12 it might be worth a go. For me personally I do like the look of the more neutral ones but I don't feel like I need to add them to my collection. Then we have some new shades added to the Pat McGrath liquid lipstick line. These are their legendary wear matte lipsticks and there are eight new shades. This is a luxurious cushion soft matte liquid formula and these are $30 each. So I say there are eight new shades and they are all very pretty shades. These were available as at March 5th. I don't think I've heard the best of reviews for this liquid lipstick formula and $30 is pretty expensive. I think when I've looked on the UK site, they are about £27, which again is really expensive. So even though these do look really pretty and I would like to try the formula, these ones are definitely a pass. Then as usual, we have the first of many Colourpop releases. These are some new cheek products and are their Cheek Dew Serum Blushes. These come in 10 different shades and are in nudes, peaches, corals, mauves and pinks. They are lightweight, buildable to leave cheeks looking naturally flushed with a hint of dew. These are definitely not a product for me. When it comes to blush, I'm definitely all about powder. Serum blushes and cream blushes definitely intimidate me. So yeah, these are not a product that I would even want to try. Even though they are probably quite affordable, the price isn't on this, but I believe they are around the $10 mark. I just, yeah, the thought of using them does scare me slightly because I wouldn't know where to begin. I know they say they are quite easy to use and they are buildable and it's easy enough to just apply it with your finger, but yeah, I just can't kind of steer away from powder blushes, so these ones are a pass for me. Then we have another addition to the BH Cosmetics Bearstone collection. So this one is for the month of March and is the Aquamarine palette. This one is a range of blues plus warm to cool tone neutrals, a pressed glitter, matte and shimmer finishes, and these are $9 each. This is a really pretty palette, but I don't really like the colour story of this one. I wouldn't really know what to do with that. And it's not the kind of tones that I reach for. So even though this is affordable and it's a pretty palette, this one is a pass for me. Then we have some new releases to Bare Minerals. These are the Gen Nude Blonzers and also a Mineralist Lip Gloss Balm. The blonzers do look really pretty and quite a few brands seem to be doing this. I think there's Ofra Cosmetics, which did a split pan and I can't remember what they called theirs, but it was definitely a lot harder to announce than Blonzer. So I do quite like the term Blonzer. So this says two in one blush and bronzer hybrid that combines the rosiness of a blush with the warmth of a bronzer. Silky formula comes in three buildable radiant shades that flatter all skin tones. To me, these do look more like blushes and I don't know how comfortable I would feel applying these as a bronzer, but I do like the concept and I like the idea of going in with one product instead of two. 
So these are $24 each, which I don't think is too badly priced. These are ones that are on my radar, not for an immediate purchase, but I would quite like to try them. As to the lip gloss balm for $20, it's just a sheer colour and glossy shine. That one doesn't appeal to me. Next, Drunk Elephants have a new release. This is the Proteiny Power Peptide Resurf Serum. This one says it's ultra concentrated blend of 11 peptides, delivers plump, bouncy skin while targeting a dull, uneven complexion. The appearance of fine lines, sun damage and enlarged pores are improved and the glow is restored, whilst powerful water boosting ingredients such as snow mushroom extract, sodium hyaluronate and sodium PCA replenish hydration levels, antioxidant rich, non-fragrance plant oils and vitamins, which all soothe your skin while adding a touch of lightweight moisture to the skin. So this one says coming soon, March slash April to their website or Sephora. And this one is $82. So it is definitely up there in price, but for Drunk Elephant, that's probably what most of their products cost. I am a huge fan of the Drunk Elephant Polypeptide Moisturiser. So this looks to be from that same line. So when I very first seen it released, I was definitely interested in it. Then I seen the price tag and my interest in Wayne slightly. So for this one, I would love to try it, but I'm not spending $82, even though I love the Proteiny Peptide Cream and I probably would like this one. I am hoping that they do put this in one of their skincare sets so that next time I do purchase a skincare set from them, I can try this product because I do definitely want to give it a go. And based on its claims, I think I would like it. Then we have a new eyeliner release from Juvia's Place. This is the Nubian Pencil Eyeliner. It is a long wearing pencil that glides seamlessly to define and fill in the eye, lids or waterline. These are $10 and come in four different shades. There is a black, a brown, a dark blue and an electric blue. These do look really nice. I'm not into eyeliners as much as I used to be, but I do like this kind of product in my waterline. And if it's anything like the quality of their lip liners, then I would definitely like these. So these are another product that is not an immediate purchase, but might be something when I next place an order on Juvia's Place that I possibly add one to my basket. Then we have a fun collaboration between Uoma Beauty and the film Coming to America. This is the Black Magic Coming to America collection and this includes a few eyeshadow palettes, some lip products and some eyeliners by the looks of it. This is a really pretty collection. I absolutely love the packaging of this one and I have already seen the Coming to America film. The original Coming to America film from the 80s was definitely one of my favourites growing up. So as soon as this one was released on Amazon, I did watch it within a day or so and I did really enjoy it. I do like the look of this collection and I've just noticed there's a face palette as well. So the big eyeshadow palette is $44. The mini eyeshadow palettes are $29. The high shine lipsticks are $22. The eyeliners are $18. The highlighter palette is $30. So this collection did definitely catch my eye because I love the film and I love the packaging on this. The eyeshadow palettes don't really appeal to me because they are very bright colour stories. They do fit the theme and everything like that but for me I wouldn't really know where to begin with them. The highlighter palette does look really pretty but again I don't think that's quite for me. The only things I would possibly want to pick up from this collection would be the lipsticks because I have quite wanted to try Uoma Beauty's lipstick formula. So this one is a maybe because I do believe these are on a couple of the UK websites. So this is one I will probably be looking into just to pick up one of the lipsticks. Then another fun collaboration is between Ulta Beauty and WandaVision. So this is quite a lot of products which range between $10 and $28. There is a gloss, a lip liner kit, a gloss and lip balm set, an eyeshadow palette vault, a brow kit, a blush palette and a five piece brush set. And this one was available from March 14th at Ulta. I do kind of wish I could pick something up from this collection because I did really love the show One Division, and I do think the packaging of this collection is really pretty and the prices is really affordable as well. If anything, I would have possibly picked up the eyeshadow palette vault or the blush palette. I do like the packaging on this is quite simple, but it is also kind of quintessentially One Division. I do think they maybe could have gone a bit more out there with the packaging, but it is really cute and it does kind of fit the theme. And from the looks of the picture I have up here for the eyeshadow palette vaults, it looks like they might possibly from be from the different decades in the show, which I think is a really fun idea. So yeah, I am slightly disappointed that I can't pick up anything from this collection because I would have liked to have done. Then yet again, another collaboration. This is between 
Taste Beauty NYC and Funko and this is a collaboration with the Rugrats. So there is a eyeshadow palette which looks to be in the shape of Angelica and then there are lip glosses which are Chucky, Tommy and Reptar and the prices are $13 for the eyeshadow palette and $8 for the lip glosses and this is available at Walmart. If I could get hold of these products I would most definitely purchase every single one of them. The Rugrats was one of my favourite shows when I was growing up. I do have a couple of jumpers and t-shirts which have the Rugrats on them. I nearly did buy another one the other day because I did just love the show. And I have recently been re-watching it with my daughter as well and she's also a huge fan. So it again, another one, if I could get this collection, I would definitely purchase something from it. And because of the price tag, I'd probably purchase everything from it if I was honest. Then we have some new lip balms from Winky Looks that have been released. These are the Marvelous Balms. This says, with a tint of a lipstick and the hydration of a lip balm, this formula is enriched with superhero ingredients. It includes ceramides for plumping and coconut oil for softening. The marble design delivers a sheer wash of colour for natural, kissable pout. Each marble lip balm comes in a unique casing that has been water printed, and these are $18 each. These do look really pretty, and to be honest, I wouldn't have said they were winky looks. I don't know what brand I would have thought they were, but I definitely wouldn't have said Winky Looks. $18 does seem quite of a high price tag for that brand. They do sound really nice with the ingredients they contain, but for me, a sheer lip balm for $18, I wouldn't pay that. So this one is a pass. Next, Tarte has a couple of new additions to the Shape Tape family. The first is a new creamy concealer, and then they also have a Shape Tape eye cream. So the eye cream looks like it comes with a built-in sort of cooling ball at the top, which is a nice idea. The eye cream and the Shape Tape Concealer and Sponge are available for $39 on QVC. And then for what's available on Tarte itself, it just says the Creamy Concealer, which is $27. So I don't know if that eye cream is possibly a QVC exclusive. I have tried Tarte Shape Tape in the past and I wasn't really a massive fan. Ultra creamy does sound more appealing because that was kind of my issue with the original one in that I did find it slightly drying. So I am a bit intrigued by this one and I've noticed recently that Tarte has been putting a lot of their products in mini forms on their website. So this is something that if they did have a mini of, I might try it in the future. Next, we have some new eyeshadow palettes from Sigma Beauty. This is the On The Go collection. This includes six eyeshadow palettes, which are nine pan. There are a mix of mattes, shimmers, metallics, and duochrome finishes, and these are $29 each or $139 for the bundle. These are really pretty palettes, and these did definitely catch my eye. There are quite a few colour stories in here that I do like the look of. I do believe these are available on a couple of UK sites, although I don't think we have all six of them. And I believe they are they're either £25 or £27, which I don't think is a bad price. I personally have only tried one palette from Sigma Beauty, and that was the Enchanted palette. And I wasn't overly impressed with the formula. It's definitely not one of my most reached for palettes. But from what I've heard, they have definitely upped their game since the release of that palette. So hopefully this would be a better formula. With regards to which ones I would go for, I would say Ivy definitely catches my eye because of the green tones to it and I've definitely been gravitating towards green eyeshadow a lot lately. And then I also like the look of Ritzy and Fiery. So this is something that I don't feel like I necessarily need because they're not overly unique that they would add something to my collection. Doesn't mean I don't want one of them. So these are ones that I definitely wouldn't be purchased them right now, but they're something that should one go on sale in the future that I might pick one up because they do look really nice and I do kind of want to give their eyeshadow formula another go. Next we have another release from Colourpop. This is the Lemoncello collection. This consists of a 12 pan eyeshadow palette, a four shadow stick set, a five piece brush set, four lip glosses or four looks glosses sorry, three blush sticks and then a couple of products from 43 Beauty and Soul Body. So this collection was available from the 18th of March and this collection was released on the same day that they had their 25% off spring sale. The reason why I know all this is because I've already made an order from this collection. 
I did get drawn in by the eyeshadow palette. I thought it was such a pretty palette and perfect for spring. I did love the look of all of the shades in here. It's got the neutrals that I like to reach for. It's got a couple of golds in. It's got a really nice green shimmer looking shade. And then I also do like that pop of blue. This one I believe is $18, but because of the 25% discount, I did get it for $13.50. At the point I'm filming this video, which is Saturday in the hopes that it's going to go live on Monday, I believe the sale is still ongoing and 25% is a really good discount, especially for a brand new collection. Overall, I do absolutely love the look of this collection. I think the packaging and everything just screams spring and I think it is gorgeous and I am so glad that I've picked that palette up. Okay, I probably didn't need the palette, but I feel like there's a couple of touches in there that do make it slightly more unique to my collection. Then we have a new eyeshadow palette release from Natasha Denona. This is the Serco Loco Palette. So this one is available now and is 50 in different shades, pastels to vibrant pigments with different finishes, mattes and shimmers. This one is $129. It is a really pretty palette. I do feel like it fits the theme, but it is also a very bright palette and not one that I would even know where to begin with. Looking at this picture on trend mood, I don't think there's one look that I could easily create with this colour story. It is very, very intimidating. I'm quite excited to see what looks people do come up with when they do their reviews of it. But for me, this one is definitely a hard pass, especially for that price point. Then we have a new release from Sol de Janeiro. This is a new body cream. This is the Bombardier Bright Body Cream. It is a retexturizing and nourishing daily body cream with fruit AHAs, vitamin C that reveals visibly brighter and smoother skin with warm rich notes of black amber, plum, vanilla woods, jasmine bloom infused with visible radiance blends and vitamin C, fast absorbing, leaving your skin soft. This does sound really nice. I don't know if it's necessarily for my skin complaints. I only really suffer from dry skin on my body. So with this being resurfacing, I think this is for possibly if you have that, the condition where you get bumps on your skin. I do get it occasionally on the back of my arms, but not enough that I feel like I would need to treat it. But I am really intrigued by how this product smells. I do love the original scent of the Boom Boom Cream from Sol de Janeiro. I'm not a fan of the Coco Cabana one, but this one does sound like something that I would like with the plum and the vanilla. So I am kind of wanting to try this one, even though I don't think it's for my skin type. And I do like as well that it looks like it comes in a mini. The 8.1 ounce is $45 and the 2.5 ounce is $20. So when it's $20, most likely it's going to be about £20. It's a product that I am probably going to purchase a mini of, even just to smell it because I am really intrigued by it. Then we have a new release from Dominique Cosmetics. This is the Now or Never collection and it consists of a eyeshadow palette and some hydrating lip glosses. The eyeshadow palette is a six pan palette with four matte shadows, one pressed glitter and one silky pale and is $25. The hydrating lip glosses are $17 each and I think they come in three different shades or two different shades. This is a really pretty collection. I like the packaging on this one. I have been wanting to try something from Dominique Cosmetics and most likely it would be an eyeshadow palette that I would try. A lot of her eyeshadow palettes are, I think they're 12 pound palettes and they are around the 40 pound mark. So if she is starting to bring out mini palettes, I'm definitely all for that and I would like to give one a go. I don't overly reach for pinky morphe tone, so this palette wouldn't be the one for me, but I'm really hoping that she possibly brings out another eyeshadow mini palette in a different colour story because I would like to give it a go. I'm not a fan that there is a pressed glitter in there, so hopefully the future ones don't have that in, but I suppose that'll possibly depend on feedback from this release. But yeah, really pretty collection, but just not for me at this point. Then a new release from Wishful Skincare. These are eye masks. These are the Eye Lift and Snatch Instant Sculpting Masks. And this says, say goodbye to tired puffy eyes, similar to the Chin Lift Sculpting Mask. Help skin look bright, tight and refreshed, infused with nature's finest extracts. These are $4 for a pair. And I think I've seen these on a UK site and I think it was £4 for one pair. These do look really nice. They look like the kind of thing that I'm looking for under my eyes at the moment because I am definitely struggling with aging under my eyes. But £4 for one pair is really expensive. So I don't know if these were possibly bundled in a pack and it was more products and it was like discounted that I might look at them. But for £4 for one pair, it's a pass for now. Then we have a new collection from NARS. This is their summer collection includes the summer solstice eyeshadow palette which is $49, the 
the Summer Solstice Cheek Duo, which is $45, the Sunkissed Bronzing Cream, which is $38, and the Cream Bronzer Brush, which is also $38. NARS is a brand that never really appeals to me if I'm honest and most of the time when I see a product of theirs on trend mood I do skip straight past it. The reason why I've gone into this one is because I follow the Instagram feed of makeup just for fun and she had actually done a swatch of this palette and it was because I seen her swatches that I wondered what eyeshadow palette it was and when I looked into it it was this one and that's what made me kind of do a double take which I never normally do with NARS palettes. Looking at it, just looking at the palette itself, it doesn't really appeal to me as anything exciting, as anything different to my collection. But from those swatches, it did look really pretty. $49, I'm definitely not going to be purchasing it, but because I did technically do a double take, I just wanted to mention it. Then there is a new release from Laneige. This is the Lip Treatment Balm. It says it's a pearlescent daily lip treatment that coats lips in nourishing hydration visibly smooths lip wrinkles and boosts the look of lip fullness. It is pina colada scented, formulated with coconut oil to deeply moisturise and peptide to help visibly smooth and firm lip wrinkles, deliver a cooling sensation and help lips look fuller. Plus the applicator is stored in the lid for cleaner use and this is $25. I am definitely tempted by this product. I am a huge fan of the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask and it is a product that I reach for on a regular basis. This definitely has a number of things going for it. I love the fact that it says it's pina colada scented. That sounds like something I would absolutely love the scent of. I love the fact that the little applicator is stored in the lid. When you do get the full sizes of the Laneige Lip Sleeping Masks, they do come with a little applicator, but it is a bit messy to store because it comes in this little plastic pouch, which just gets covered in product. So I like that this is now stored in the lid and I'm kind of hoping they possibly change the packaging on the lip sleeping masks. But yeah, this is a product that if I do see it on Yes Style or wherever I can pick up the Neige from, I would definitely give this one a go. Even though $25 is quite pricey just for a lip balm, I know that I like the lip sleeping mask, so I am probably going to like this one. So yeah, I think this one is a purchase if I can get hold of it. Then we have the second release from Jaclyn Cosmetics, and this is some lip products. This is the Pout Spoken Lip Collection and consists of some liquid lipsticks in 15 shades, which are $20 each. And then some lip liners, which are $18 each and come in 12 different shades. There is a lot of gorgeous looking nude shades in this collection. And when I first seen just snippets of the pictures released before seeing it was Jaclyn Cosmetics, I was definitely drawn in by it. I really like the packaging, I really like the look of the shades available. I am obviously just put off by a Jaclyn Hill lip product, given all the drama from two years ago. For me, ordering from the UK, I do believe that these products are only available on her website and possibly Ulta. So I don't think they are products that I will be easily able to get hold of without paying shipping and things like that. And from what I've seen on social media, the shipping isn't that cheap and customs, etc. So even though I would quite like to try something from this line, I don't technically need any more lip products and it might be more hassle than it's worth. I'm definitely going to hold back and wait to see some reviews first, but it is something that I would possibly like to try in the future. And then the final tab I have open is something else from Pat McGrath. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder in yellow. It does say new shade, so this must be an existing product, it's just a new yellow shade. It says perfect your under eye with flawless even illumination, it's a weightless powder, silky texture. It says it can be used alone or with your regular shade as a targeted way to brighten and spot neutralise redness and this is $30. For me, if I'm reaching for a powder under my eyes, I tend to go for translucent or something to combat the purple under eyes. I don't suffer from redness under my eyes, so with this being a yellow powder, this definitely wouldn't be one for me. $30 is quite pricey and if this was a product where it is different shades I would be tempted to look into it but for this one it's definitely a pass. So I've been filming for that long I'm just going to do one last refresh of Trend Mood just to make sure I haven't missed anything. Okay there are a couple more posts one is some nail varnishes from Holo Taco which are in four different shades there's a yellow, blue, green and grey. These do look really pretty but I don't think that's a brand I can get here in the UK so that one is a pass for me.
Then the final thing is a new brush set from Sigma Beauty. This is the Deluxe Blending Brush Set and this one is $122 and it looks like it includes a lot of their kind of classic brushes plus three new ones. This does look like a really nice brush set. I do have one Sigma brush in my collection which is the one that did come in the Enchanted palette that I mentioned earlier and it is a fantastic brush. It does definitely make me want to try more from the brand but because I do have quite a large brush collection, especially an eyeshadow brush collection, for the time being I don't need this set but if money was no object I would definitely purchase this to kind of upgrade my brushes. But that is everything, I'm up to date on Trend Mood, there were definitely a lot of releases to go over there. I don't think there was too many that I said yes to which is kind of a good thing and obviously there's already that one from Colourpop that I've made a purchase of. But that is it for today's video, if you did enjoy it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already, thanks!